which whichever ball we ball ball is played with uh, by by whatever boy and, and vice versa. Okay, so as you can see, there are then uh, the arrows go back back and forth, and as a matter of fact, the um, uh, the uh, there might be several arrows arriving to the same ball as you can see over there. Uh, a tennis ball has two boys playing with it, and at the same time, if you look at that boy Ned, uh, Ned he plays us uh, uh, on the, day, the particular day played uh, both uh, tennis and football. Okay, so the, these are the possibilities of relations, and what it makes a difference uh, as we move on to functions that's not going to be. Uh, the case anymore, so we're narrowing down uh, the uh, scope of possibilities. But first, uh, uh, going over the uh, what happened, uh, as you can see, we were just trying to put the data that is uh, visualized on the left. Uh, we put it in the form of a table first on the right over there. So putting uh, one, um, uh, the boys on the as the, as the uh, on the left and the balls uh, at the top, uh, the row and column, and create a table marking whichever. Uh, whoever plays with what. Okay, so that's, that's what created um, uh, the table. And then this is um, a crucial step. Uh, the last one, if we actually rearrange arrange our axes, x and y, in the appropriate traditional way, uh, uh, in traditional way is x-axis uh, to the right, y-axis uh, up, uh, then our table turns into its the same table. So you remember I just did it. I just flipped it appropriately and rotated, uh, but without changing anything else, uh, creates uh, uh, what we call uh, the graph, the graph of the of the relation. So what's going to happen next is we will be looking at um, at uh, uh, this possibility when uh, uh, the relation is more uh, narrow, and uh, 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 its narrowness is uh, is uh, that uh, every boy. Uh, the, the question changes. Okay, so we're going to be talking about uh, the relation as uh, which game is the most preferred by which boy. So, uh, so then it will be. It means that every boy will have only one arrow uh, starting from uh, from him. Okay, so so this is not going to be a possibility anymore over over here. So this is not a possibility, as we can see. Ned playing with two balls, and the Ben was playing also with two. So that's not the case anymore. We want to pick one uh, uh, most favorite one. Okay, so let, let's carry that out. And that will uh, that's what's called a function. Uh, I already started in that direction over here. As you can see, a function is a relation such that for, for, uh, for every, uh, there's only one y for each x. There is exactly one, exactly one, maybe better put, exactly, uh, exactly one uh, y for each x. So you have a bunch of axes here, and each of them has only one arrow starting from it, like this. Okay, so let's let's make that specific with our specific example. So, um, okay, so these are my these are the boys, and then um, let's create. Um, uh, let me copy the balls here. So the setup is the same. It is the question that we're trying to answer is different. Nope. This one. Okay. So uh, let me rotate this for convenience. Okay. So two sets apart from each other, and uh, I wanna I wanna connect them in the in a particular particular way. So uh, quite from observation or otherwise. So uh, Tom is playing with with uh, the, the favorite uh, game of Tom is basketball. Okay, and so is Ben's. Okay, and Ned plays tennis. And uh, Ken and uh, C play football. Okay. So it is a relation to begin with. Once again, a relation between, between the two sets of uh, um, it has been established, but it is a special relation 
And the requirement is, as I said, there is only one arrow starting at each, at each location. There, as you can see, there are two. They could arrive to the same place. They could arrive, the two arrows could arrive to the same location, uh, but uh, they cannot start at the same location. Uh, two, two arrows cannot start at the same location. Okay, so that's the setup. Okay, and then we are, we are progressing in the same manner. It is a relation, so whatever we have learned how to do, uh, we will continue doing it. Uh, so, in other words, we're going to form a table, and then we're going to uh, draw uh, the graph of this function. Okay, so let, let me do uh, that again. So I'm drawing, I'm writing the, uh, 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 just for the, for the sake of the table, I write once again these four uh, uh, boys as a list. So Tom, Ben, Ned, Ken, and uh, Sid. Okay, I write both here, the basketball, basketball, and then uh, tennis, and baseball, and football. So once again, I look at the arrows, and each arrow will have a, a, a cross mark uh, to indicate that relation. So Tom plays basketball, Ben plays basketball, Ned plays tennis, Ken and, and Sid play football, like this. Not play, but they, they prefer, prefer to use it. Okay, so that's the table, the table of this data. Okay. And then, uh, once again, I do. I want to do the same trick as we did last time, and that is have the two axes uh, present. So uh, the the x-axis for the this is x, this is x over here, and this is y, and then the y-axis for the for the balls. And, uh, and then arrange them in, in the traditional way, which is once again, uh, axes go horizontal uh, up, uh, x goes to the right, and y goes up. Okay, so that will create a, the graph. Okay, so we're taking it. Okay, so we, I just, uh, I probably want this going to, not going to fit. Okay, so uh, let me. Okay, so I need to rotate it appropriately. Uh, uh, okay, so let me rotate it 90 degrees first, and then uh, oh, okay, I need to flip it horizontally uh, like this, and now I need to flip it vertically in order to get my axis up, y axis up. Okay, so that is that is my. I can put it here maybe. Uh, that is my graph. Okay, so uh, so once again, let's zoom in a little bit to examine the to examine the the graph. Hmm. I'm just getting quite heavy here. Okay, so uh, yeah, it fits. Okay, so uh, so as you can see, names are slightly off, but it's no more than just just an appropriate rotation. So uh, the relations are still here, and as we did it last time, once again, you can recover all the data that we have on the left. Tom plays, uh, Tom plays basketball, uh, Ben plays basketball, right? So once again, so the starting, uh, the starting uh, point is here. This is our sad X. We look at each of the, of the, of the uh, elements on the list, the, the boys, and we find which, which gauge he prefers by going towards that cross and finding what it is. Okay, see, uh, for example, Ken, we going, there's only one cross above it, above him, and we find that cross, and from that cross we go horizontally, and we hit, uh, uh, what do we hit? We hit football, and that's how we know it. Okay, same for, for, for C. Okay, so that is the nature of uh, the nature of, of functions. Um, if the arrows go one way, and uh, uh, the, uh, then we can start thinking about functions as something that uh, um, gives you that is about inputs and outputs. Okay, so these are the inputs, the boys, and these are the outputs. 
Okay, so uh, it does not work for for uh, relations in general, but for for functions it wor works out fine because why? Because of the by design, by design there is exactly one y for each x. Okay, so it makes sense. If you know x, there will be only y found. So that's why we're gonna think about functions as a, some kind of a black box that produces y's from x. Okay, so say this is my uh, function x, input comes in and then somehow, whether we know it how or we do not, and then it uh, gives us uh, the output y, like, like a machine or, or a computer, okay? So that, that's ultimately how we're going to uh, think uh, about functions, but this is where, where uh, things come from. Uh, they come from, uh, they come from data. And, uh, and then uh, uh, the rest of it is uh, just uh, different ways to represent data. The most visual one is on the left. Just go straight to, to the beginning, uh, uh, draw arrows. It's very easy to see uh, what, who plays what. Uh, then uh, it is, however, is unbearably uh, complicated when well, once you go beyond like five, you go to 50, and those arrows will be just confusing probably. Uh, so that is why we want to put it in a more uh, standard format, and we did put it in the form of, uh, of, of a table, which is uh, the second one. And uh, uh, in fact, we even saw it right here. Uh, we used uh, Excel. Okay, so that, that was the relation that, that we used for, for Excel, and now uh, we, could, we could just as well use it for, um, uh, we can use it for, uh, for our function. Uh, once again, to see the, uh, uh, the the relation, so it's the same table: baseball, tennis, for the base baseball for the y, and these uh, four boys, uh, five boys uh, on the left. So the process will be just in a different locations because we just changed uh, changed our story. So this is x. What x x? Oh, okay, I see. Enable editing. <laughs> x. X. Okay. So, so once again, that's the first column. Uh, as you can see, the first two boy can net play play baseball. Then uh, uh, tennis is played by. <coughs> I think I think I messed up the the, the, the names actually. Uh, the, uh, Tom. Okay, I'll have to. Uh, I'm afraid I have to rewrite this. So Tom. Uh, Tom is here and he plays baseball. The second one is Ben and it plays. Uh, and he plays also uh, basketball. And then the next one is Ned, and he plays tennis. Okay, so nothing here. And then the, the other two, uh, what's left is, uh, see, uh, oh, hold on, Tom, Ben, Ned, okay, uh, Ken, Ken, uh, Ken plays what uh, he plays football, right here, and the last one who is uh, said you know, he also plays baseball. Ah, uh, yes, baseball. It's a football. I don't know what happened here. Uh, okay, football. Uh, nobody plays baseball. Okay, here's here's the uh, the data. Uh, let me maybe make the picture clear uh, slightly better uh, like this. Um, that's what Excel allows you to do. Uh, make just a table look slightly better like this, maybe. Okay, so that's that's my table. That's how you uh, present data. Uh, in the exact same manner, uh, the idea is the same uh, as, as last time. The difference is elsewhere it is that uh, the data, which is, is a subtle thing, that uh, um, uh, there's only one cross in every, uh, there's only one cross in every row, okay? Because uh, the inputs are on the left, and there is only one output. So, so once again, if I start with uh, with say Ben, I go from from the, from Ben into into the field. I find the cross, and there's only one cross, as you can see this this whole row here, and there's only one cross. And I find that cost, and from that cost I go vertical, and I, I, I find out that they play baseball like that. Okay. So, uh, so certainly uh, it's worthwhile, I suppose, uh, to also demonstrate that this is not uh, something that um, uh, too detached from uh, from some more uh, immediate uh, interest of ours, and that is numbers. 
So how about we are, uh, let me copy this, and I might try to, to demonstrate to you that this is indeed uh, entirely about the nature of data doesn't matter. So what if we number, if we number the boys and we number the balls? Okay, so five boys, so instead of half time being that cat, can sit, I'll just put one, two, uh, three, four, and five. Okay, so just number, maybe they have numbers on the jersey or something like that. Okay, and then we number the baseball, uh, baseball too. Okay, then, then you realize that, then you, you can imagine what happens uh, to, uh, to our axes. Then axes become a, exactly what you have seen elsewhere. They, are, they will have numbers on them. Okay, so it just happens to be uh, uh, coming from, from data that is not numerical in nature, but we can introduce that if we want to. Okay, so in fact, you can now look at this data and um, maybe let me also arrange this like this. Okay, we can arrange this data in such a way that we can actually plot the graph. See, uh, where is that thing? Okay, uh, uh, the graph is on the right and it's pretty uh, uh, nasty looking, but I could do a better job if I'm using software. So, so I'm going to use Excel and I'm going to plot the same graph. Okay. So, so how do we plot graphs in Excel? We have to form pairs. So, so let, let's look at the pairs of, of, of numbers that we observe on the right. So for each cross is, is a point, so one and one. Okay, so it will, the, the, that pair means that what Tom plays basketball. Okay, then two and one, two and one. Uh, ben plays basketball too. Then number three is Ned. Number three plays two, which is tennis. Okay. And then uh, Ken, number four, plays four, which is uh, uh, football. And then uh, five seed plays also plays also four. Okay. Okay. So uh, so that's the shorter way to represent the same data. But the only point is that now I can actually uh, make a plot of it as Excel allows us to do, like this. So that is my graph of, of, of my function. Look at it. So numbers are there. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 for the, for the boys, and now 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 uh, for the, uh, of, on the y-axis for the, for the balls. And each point over there in that little table uh, appears as a point. So remember the, um, you've, seen, you've seen graphs like that before. Right, so uh, plotting, uh, plotting things point by point, uh, and uh, uh, what is a point? A point is represented by, by two numbers, and we're going to talk at length uh, about that. But this is just this starting point, uh, starting uh, um, the, the, the simplest probability situation when you have only uh, four uh, five data points. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, uh, it, it, the uh, the graph is right there. Uh, it is uh, you can you can uh, check that. Make sure that it is the case. It's the same. It's the same graph. So, so if I replace these crosses over here with uh, with um, with dots like this, so two horizontal, then jump up by one, and then two more like this. Okay. So that's the graph we started with, and that's exactly what Excel has produced. Once again, two horizontally, then one jump up, then double jump, and then two more on the same level. Okay, so all the data has been visualized by, by this graph. So the data itself is, is what we're studying, but uh, uh, the reality is that we want to visualize things uh, whenever we can because that might reveal some patterns. Now, not, not this one. It doesn't, I don't think it reveals anything, but we will try to, uh, to plot graphs in order to see if there is anything interesting uh, behind, behind the data. Okay, so at this point we're just just uh, trying to to learn how how uh, how this is done. Okay, so uh, so then uh, with this in mind, we can actually let me take this ta little, little table and copy it and introduce the notation that is truly common for for functions, uh, which is. Uh, Um, uh, which is algebraic. Okay, just go down. It doesn't want to go down. Okay. 
So this is little data is here. Uh, I'm smallish, but it's the same data. And, uh, and then I could represent this data, which is right now in the form of a table, in the form of a table. What's going on here? Uh, so that's my table. Uh, what does it mean? It means I am putting x's here and y's there. So one, two, three, four, five. And uh, these are the inputs of my function. And these are the outputs of my function. And they are 1, 1, 2, 4, 4. OK? So once again, now you, you, you might remember that where those numbers uh, came from. They, they came from those persons and those balls uh, that just happened to be uh, numbered. Uh, but, but really, you could now move on to, to the algebraic representation. So this is like a table a representation. Uh, of functions, uh, it only takes uh, takes two two columns, as you can see. It doesn't matter how large that column is. You can easily imagine that uh, that this table could it is a spreadsheet and it could easily have thousands of, of rows. So the data, uh, the size of the uh, of this data is is uh, unlimited. Uh, but uh, we gonna uh, we're not gonna do a lot of, of that. But what we look at is uh, is the uh, uh, to begin with uh, algebraic representations. Okay, so uh, so suppose the function is um, called f. So something that you might have may have seen before. This is how we write these. Each row is written as follows: f of one is equal to one. Okay, does this look familiar? Input goes in parentheses. Output is on the right. Okay. So, so once again, this is, this one is the input. This one is the output. So I still could use that the uh, the uh, secondary way of uh, of uh, diagrammatic way of representing. So if one is the input, then one is the output. Okay. So so once again, is there a formula here or some kind of procedure inside of that black box? Maybe, maybe not. It doesn't matter. Uh, the point is the establishing this relation uh, between inputs and outputs, and so one produces one. Okay, uh, this is the crucial uh, uh, part, certainly, because this is the algebraic notation and everything you see uh, in mathematics from now, now on is, is relies on this, on this little thing of, uh, of, uh, of, of notation. And so you have to, you have to be very careful uh, understanding uh, understanding that notation. So let me write out what's left before we look at it again. So f of 2, the input of 2, the output of 1. f input is 3, output is 2. f of 4 is 4, and f of 5 is 4 as well. Okay? So it's the same same information. Le on the left and on the right, uh, the same thing is written. Uh, somewhat uh, like data analysis uh, on the left, uh, and algebra on the right. Since this is a math course and it's called algebra, so you, you can see how we uh, we're going to be relying on the uh, on what's on the right more than what's on the left. But what's on the left is still behind what we do on the right, and it can always we can always go back and forth, and we'll go back and forth. And uh, whenever you have whenever whenever you want to visualize something, that is uh, going back to a table is is inevitable. Right, so having a table allows us to to visualize the graph. Right, so if we have it in the form of, of formulas uh, on the right, it's it's not as obvious of how to visualize it. But if we put it in the form of uh, of a table, uh, two column table, uh, then we, we can. Okay. Okay. So uh, so let's uh, and so once again, let me do one more example of, of this. So like the third or fourth way to visualize this input five. Output four. Okay, so let's uh, take a careful look at, at the notation. So f of say of three is equal to two. Okay, so let me point out what this is. So once again, this is the input. So that remember it what we call that set x. Then we have the output. We have the output, uh, y. And f is simply the name of the function.
So there are three names involved here. X is the name of the uh, of the set of inputs, and Y is the name of of the set of outputs. Okay, and then and then uh, uh, so those are three names up here: X, F, Y. Okay, so that's the uh, triple of things that we we got to deal with: uh, uh, the set of uh, the two sets and the uh, uh, function between them. Okay, so uh, even sometimes you see a notation like this: F, X, arrow, Y. Okay, so. So uh, to emphasize the point that uh, x and y are not equal, and the, we are moving f, f takes it from x to y. Okay, so remember those arrows. That is the uh, we put those. That that is one of those arrows from x to y, not necessarily backwards. Okay, and then uh, um, uh, f transforms uh, inputs into outputs in some way. How it it doesn't matter at this point because um, well. Sometimes you just don't know. Uh, sometimes all you have is data. Remember, remember, we just collected data, and we, we ended up with uh, uh, we ended up with um, uh, with with this. this. This came once again. This is this is where the no the, the other one. Uh, this is where the data came from. What we just made algebraic uh, came from over here. So remember this: one, two, three, four, five. Okay, one, two. Three and four, okay. And those arrows, as we can see, from one to one, from two to one, from two, uh, from three to two, and so on. Okay. So uh, wherever that data came from it doesn't make any difference. It's still uh, it is still a function as long as as long as uh, uh, as you see uh, over here, uh, there is only one arrow starting from each element of the uh, uh, set of inputs. Okay, so so once again, this is the crucial uh, thing to remember about the, our notation: um, the name of the set, the name of the uh, set of inputs, a set of outputs, and the name of the function. Okay, so you uh, you more commonly you probably will see something like this, and in that case, uh, so the x and, and y are. Uh, these are names now, once again, names of inputs and outputs. And so, in other words, there it is when they are not specified, then that's where you have x and y. So that is the uh, uh, something of a challenge when you have uh, uh, what we got on the right. It is, it is in fact, something that is not... Um, uh, there, is, there seems to be so little specificity uh, to it. Uh, but um, I remember where, where where it comes from. Okay, so so x and y are then the unspecified uh, variables, uh, and you might even remember what they are called. X and y, what they are called. As well, they're variables. They're variables, but what's the difference? Between x and y, uh, the air inputs and outputs. Yeah, that, that's that's one way. Uh, one uh, one angle that I would just try to talk about. I, I wonder if you heard uh, such terms as independent and dependent variables, right? So so x is then independent, also known as the input, and uh, uh, x uh, y is dependent. So that, that's the difference between them, and the, uh, that's the difference between x and y. They are not equal, and uh, uh, y we call x independent because we can freely vary x, and no matter what x we, uh, is plugged in into, in our, in a, into our uh, function, uh, the, uh, it should work out. Okay, and at the same time, y depends on, on x. In fact, it could be, things could be so bad that, in fact, you could... You, it, you cannot necessarily be able to find uh, x or h y for a look at it. You cannot find. Well, uh, can you find x or h y? Can you look at the table?
can you find an x or hy? I can find an x for 1. I can be, it, it is, uh, in fact, I have two answers. I have two answers. So what is x corresponding to 1? The answer is actually 2, 1 and 2. I can find x for 2, okay? I can, what, what's missing? What? 3. 3 is missing, right. So uh, there is no 3 on the right. It means that 3... Uh, it means that 3 has no corresponding value of x. So there is no way you're going to hit 3, well, because nobody likes what is that baseball for some reason, and uh, uh, if there is, no, there is no such x for, for uh, y equals 3. So it is possible, and that, that is the dependence. Why, that's why is it, y is a dependent variable, so it entirely depends on x. But it varies. It certainly depends on what we choose to be x and what we choose to be y, and we choose here uh, to be x to be uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and we choose y to be 1, 2, 3, or 1, 2, 3, 4, okay? In that case, uh, so the answer is no, uh, y equal to 3 has no corresponding uh, x, okay? Now, there are uh, more names here, and that is the names are uh, the domain and the codomain of the function. Domain, the set of inputs, and the codomain, uh, the set of outputs. Okay, so so once again, we go from x to y. Uh, uh, the word domain is descriptive uh, in the sense that it is where we are allowed to freely move around. Uh, picking the, that's where independent variables live. It is the domain. Okay, uh, the codomain is just a, a fancy word made up for uh, for the space uh, uh, for the set of outputs, inputs, outputs. Okay, so so to make sure that uh, we can see beyond the, this little toy example, uh, we do, I could I could make up a, a function here and have a bigger uh, bigger graph. So, for example, for example, I can. Uh, all I have to do to create a function is, is create a table of x's and y's. Okay. So let, let's do that as an illustration uh, of what happens when there is more data. Okay, so I'll put x's here and y's there. Uh, how about x's will run from 0 to, uh, to whatever, uh, to, one, to, 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 to how many? 25. Okay, so uh, 0, I don't want to do it by hand, so I'll just simply write uh, this plus 1. Okay, and so I have a bunch of, I have a bunch of x's right away. Okay, so as you can see, my x is run from 0 to 21, and then uh, I could I could put whatever I want for uh, for the value of 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 y or what. Uh, well, I could I could put anything I want here. Um, what kind of function do you want to have? Any 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 way to compute uh, y that you can suggest? I want I'm computing y in terms of x, so. Anything goes. Well, why, why not? Uh, so I'll go. I'll go. Uh, the formula goes like this: equal to x plus five. Okay. So the formula is here: is the previous uh, entry plus five, and then I spread it down, and that's 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 my values. So it's exactly the same idea as before, except we have way more data. Okay? And then, uh, so that is the function. Uh, depending on what you choose to, to be its domain, it might, it might be the whole function is right here, uh, because if I just say that these uh, 22 uh, entries on the left are my um, inputs, 
uh, that, then that is the domain. Uh, and then, um, and then uh, I, I could stop here and just say, well, that's a function. But usually, it is just so common to not to stop here and once again do what I just did, did uh, a minute ago, and that is visualize it with a chart. So I just go and I plot on a chart. Here, here we go. So it's a chart of, of what? It is a dependence of x is on y. That probably could do a better job here uh, with um, uh, so terrible. Why? Why is it not here? No. Okay. Uh, no. Uh, Okay, so uh, horizontal lines, these are those correspond to y's, and I want the same for x's to make, uh, make my point. Okay, uh, I just need more of these. So each entry on the x-axis should have an entry, it should have a straight line starting from it in order for us to find the uh, corresponding value of y. I just need to... Uh, put it somewhere. They change everything every year. I can find any more. So changing the <coughs> no. Okay, I need the no oh, then I stop everything. So anyway, uh, uh, so hopefully uh, this illustrates uh, well enough for you. So every point represents a row. Those those two points they're plotted on the graph, and this is uh, uh, this is a chart of or graph a graph of my function. Okay. So so now we're looking to functions in a, uh, and relations and functions in a more. Um, or in any way. So how numerical functions uh, emerge in a way that explains why, why it's worthwhile. So this was just for, for the time being. It was uh, entirely a way to represent data. Okay, so we have data coming from somewhere and then there are several ways to represent it. Uh, it is table, it is a graph, it is a, a function, and th this is the main notation that we're going to stick with uh, throughout, uh, well, this is pretty much math. All, all mathematics is based on this notation right there in the middle. Okay, so, so functions are just so central to, uh, to, uh, to mathematics that we, that's why we got to start with that. Okay, so, uh, so I want to start, do some, uh, pro solve a problem that is uh, um, somewhat, somewhat uh, realistic. So, okay, so we have a <coughs> farmer problem. And we have a farmer with 100 yards of fencing, of fencing material. And he wants to build a uh, an enclosure, a rectangular, rectangular enclosure for his, for his, uh, for his cattle. Okay, the largest possible, obviously. Okay, so that's a, uh, you recognize this is a word problem. And so they're certainly uh, one of the more challenging ones, but the, uh, we'll just uh, go slowly <coughs> through it and, and, and see how, how we actually do have to have uh, functions in order to solve problems of this kind. So, uh, so let's just start with using our common sense, trying to solve uh, this problem and trying to ignore what we have learned so, so far, just uh, uh, what a farmer would, would how, how, how would he try to solve this problem. So imagine yourself a farmer and you, you have a uh, fencing uh, of, of uh, either wood or, or uh, like barbed wire and then you have 100, 100 yards of it. 
He wants to build as large as possible an enclosure. How would you approach the problem? Well, that's right. So, uh, so we need to find need to find the sides or dimensions of the rectangle. Okay, so the width and the depth. Okay, so how would you go about finding them? Well, do, do you realize, first of all, that you, there are so many ways you can build that enclosure. So you can vary the width and you can, can vary the depth uh, with the same amount of fencing material. It will produce different shapes and therefore different areas. Okay, so on the most, uh, from the top of your head, what, you, what would you do? How would you start solving the problem, ignoring the mathematics versus the common sense? I would too, yes, but that's not ignoring mathematics. That's that's you jumping over all the suffering that that we have to go through in order, and that would be the correct answer. Yes, the correct answer is it is a square. Yes, but how do you arrive to that? That it, you are using your your understanding of mathematics in order to guess the answer and then uh, great. Uh, but uh, it, the the problem would be um, slightly complicated if more complicated if you say you have a river adjacent to your enclosure and then you don't want to put any fencing uh, along the river because you, you don't want to waste it. So then the answer is not square anymore. Okay, so I just don't want to uh, overcomplicate the problem. So this problem does have a very nice and, and I guess uh, uh, natural answer. A uh, square rectangle will give you the best. Okay, uh, I just want to go through this and arrive to that answer in, a, in, a, in a relying on pretty much nothing but common sense. So, so what do they, how, how would the common sense, what the common sense would tell you to, uh, to do if you want to solve this problem? Trial and error, right? Uh, trial and error. Um, so you try different combinations of width in depth and then you compare them right so so um, for different combinations okay and then then you can see already that it is going to be about data okay so I could plot I could I could I could uh, choose uh, several possible uh, widths and depths, but uh, uh, but uh, uh, so so for example, if I choose a width to be ten, I could choose uh, depth to be I don't know twenty. The and the area of the enclosure is two hundred. Okay, so and then I could give, keep keep doing that and say I have twenty. And 50, and the area is uh, uh, 100, or uh, whatever is it, is uh, 1,000, okay, uh, and so on, uh, 30 and 40. You see the problem with this approach? It varies a lot. It varies a lot, right? And I'm, I'm not really, I'm, I'm kind of choosing the, these uh, these pairs of numbers in a random way. There is, a, there is no way. How do I know that I have covered all the possible width combinations of width? And depth. So, how do I uh, I get to to make it more specific? So, so well, well, let's take a look at the first one. What's wrong with this choice? Ten and twenty. Well, what's wrong with this choice? Uh, not using all the fencing material. That that's really bad. So, not all material used. You know, if I increase the uh, the amount of material I'm using, I'm, I'm building a bigger uh, bigger structure, and then you can have the opposite. Uh, is the, that's what happened. Uh, that is the opposite problem. Is here, uh, this is too much. I don't have this much material. Thirty and forty will give you. Remember, thirty by thirty, 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 forty, forty. I don't have this much, so I'm computing stuff that is really of no interest to me because I cannot build an enclosure like that. So what do I do?
I, I could, but uh, I, I still want to do trial and error. So how do I, uh, let's try to limit our attention only to the enclosure that we can actually build to begin with, and then secondly, <coughs> that they use all the material that's available. Yeah, like that. So um, choose. Still have a couple of minutes left. Uh, so let's choose the uh, the uh, the dimensions with that that use that use all the material. which is 100 yards. Okay, so let's try to, W and D, let's try to st state this uh, in an algebraic way. So there is a 100 yards of material, and I want to use all of it. So this is my width, this is my depth. So. What's the limit that we put on our on on the possible enclosures that we're going to build? Uh, we are building them in our heads. We don't really want to build. The trial and error is actually with a pen. Not not we're not building those uh, enclosures yet. So what would make uh, this kind of abstract rectangle using the exactly 100 material of fencing? That's right. So, so in other words, what is the, how much does it use? It is D plus W plus D plus W, and it is equal to 100. Uh, and, uh, well, since we're out of time, what is this called? And it is called, based on our discussion yesterday uh, on Monday, what's it called? What is this? No, no, it's not a function, but a relation. It is a relation. Okay, the homework will be assigned later today. No, it's online. It's entirely online. Yes. Yes. Uh, midnight.